On today's episode of Travels with Bill, we visit the Blue Lakes in Manitoba's Duck Mountain Provincial Park. We'll take a quick tour of the lake, plus we'll do some urban archaeology to understand why you see a ring of dead trees around the water. We're looking at both Blue Lakes here. To the top of your screen is West Blue Lake, and on the bottom of the screen is East Blue Lake. You can certainly go to either one, but it's East Blue Lake that has all the comforts of home. The Duck Mountains are part of the Manitoba Escarpment. East Blue Lake is one of the clearest lakes in Manitoba. It's also deep, with a bottom of 60 meters in some places. There's good fishing here. You'll find rainbow trout, splake, lake trout, and walleye. Some of those fish are huge. Don't be surprised to see the fish swimming below because the lake is so clear. Blue Lakes are just a few minutes from Baldy Mountain, the highest point in all of Manitoba. You can easily drive there for a day trip. There's also plenty of other nearby lakes and resorts, so if you don't like to stay in one place, you can visit them all. Check out the water. Not only is it blue, but it's clear. We're looking several feet into the water from above. Near the shore, it's a lot more shallow, but if you go too far past the swim line, it gets deep quick. See that big beach? We'll get back to it. Blue Lakes Resort is an excellent place to stop in or stay. They have eight cabin rentals available that sleep between three and five people each. For day trippers, they also offer boat, canoe, and kayak rentals. You'll find gasoline here, plus almost everything else you'll need for your trip, including firewood and all the good things to eat, including drinks, snacks, chips, and even hot food. Here's a look at those rental cabins that are just out back of the main resort building. The Blue Lakes Resort is located right beside the beach, so it's easy to drop in for your needs, or to get to the beach when you've rented a cabin. Just behind the resort is the Provincial Park Campground, so you can bring a tent or trailer and stay just steps away from this beautiful sand. Inside this store you'll find a variety of items, from candy for the kids to drinks. They have chocolate bars, plus the essentials for camping like bacon, eggs, milk, and of course bread. If you've forgotten something for your camping trip, check out the camping wall with batteries and everything else you could need for the tent or trailer, even some gloves for the heavy lifting. If you've come to the lake for fishing, make sure to check out the fishing supplies. You'll find some of the luckiest hooks here and you may just catch the big one. The grocery section has all the things you'll need to make the comforts of home at your campsite or your cabin, plus some swim accessories for the kids. No trip to Blue Lakes is complete without taking something home to remember the trip by. You'll find a variety of clothing to remind you of your amazing time spent in the Duck Mountains. From t-shirts to sweaters and more, do check out what's available to remind you of your trip. This isn't the type of resort that has only a couple things. You'll find almost anything you need at the Blue Lakes. Lots of people come here from the other resorts to make sure they find just the thing they're looking for. The Blue Lakes Resort is located one mile away from the major junction, so if you're coming from Dauphin, look for the sign to make sure you get the right road. Just a short walk from the resort, you'll find more of the Provincial Park Campground. There's almost new, modern washrooms here. There's also porta potties on the beach, but a walk brings you to the flush toilets. Right beside that is the day use camping area, and smack dab in the middle is a playground. Now you can come and camp here for the day with your provincial park pass, make a fire, and enjoy the playground. If you have a larger group, there's a cook shack available as well. There's a water tap on the cook shack to fill up whatever it is you're working on, or for the kids to fill up those water guns. Inside the shack, you'll find a wood stove. Plus, there's also a picnic table for your use. They do ask you keep the cook shack clean, as with the rest of the park, because it's a shared area for everyone's use. The cook shack overlooks the lake. Now you'll see the boats going by here. Those are private boats and these are the boats from the resort. That's a private dock, but you can pull a boat up here on the sand and tie down if you need to. There's the swimming area and a look back at that large main beach. We'll take to the air again to take a better look at what's available for swimming. 
we're going past that playground and the washrooms and there's the beach itself now this is a fairly busy day at blue lakes but there's still plenty of room see how far out those people come even to that rope line you can almost touch the bottom with your toes a little past the beach you see the boat launch there's a boat coming in right now in fact past that there's also another dock now that second dock you see is quite popular for fishing lots of people fish off that dock and catch fish as well the further dock on is also quite often used for fishing but you'll also find some scuba divers making use of it now if you fast forward around the lake here for a while you'll see the road going along the side but way way far out there's one more dock now that's not one you really walk to you'll find an access to it on the road with a spot for a vehicle or two to park that far dock they ask for no fires but you'll see lots of families go there and spend a little time in somewhat seclusion able to enjoy the lake without the crowds from the rest of the area now I did promise a little urban archaeology on this Travels with Bill and we're looking at part of it here. See all that dead tree along the edge of the lake? Well you wonder exactly why is it there and we're going to talk about just that. There you see that far dock way out far looks like some paddle boarders out there today enjoying it. Again you park right near that dock and just walk down some steps onto it. So what made those trees die? Well the simple answer is a whole lot of water. When I started to coming to Blue Lakes, those trees were all alive and well, and the water level was a little bit lower than it is now. I'd walk along the edge of the trees and quite often fish in front of them, finding room. Here's a closer look at some of them have been cut down. Check out the trees and check out where the water is now. Well, that's a long ways away, and of course it wouldn't have bothered the trees as it is. But here's a little closer look. Looking up that tree, see how high up the water line is? There you go. The lake water used to be all the way up here. Blue Lake rose a lot over time, and eventually it went back down, not before it killed the trees around the edge. Here again, we're looking at just how many trees there used to be, the damage done by the water, and the now receding water level. The water's still not as low as it once was. Here at the main beach, you'll notice a little berm. That was keeping the higher water away from the resort. Well, of course, the water would still seep through the sand, which means it had to be pumped out. You'll find a pump house and this little thing. That's where the water used to come out. There was a hose here that took it back to the lake, which was only a few feet away. These days, no water's coming out because the water's gone down so much, there's simply nothing left to pump. When you think about where the water was coming out, and then take a look back down to the beach, you can see exactly how far that water has disappeared, way, way back there. Well, there's another interesting piece of the urban archaeology. You'll find this cement path leading to a cement pad. You may wonder, why would they get rid of a building here? The answer is, this pad was underwater. In fact, at times, you could barely see the pad for the amount of water over top of it. You'd easily find a foot of water here. The building that had been here had to be torn down because it was flooded. We thought we'd never see it again. Then, when the water went down, ta-da, the pad is back. What's left of the cement path is the part of it that was underwater when the building was removed, and they didn't take it out because it was just too hard to do. Coming to the side of it, here's the boat launch. We'll take a walk out on here. Again, see how clear the water is, and this is even when it's stirred up from a boat being launched. But what's that out in the water? Yeah, you're looking at a place to park cars. Those are cement curb stops. Well, guess what used to park here at a different time in Blue Lake's life? It's still underwater. You can imagine the water back on top of that cement pad. It looked much the same. The beach itself is also a story of flooding. It's a much larger beach than normal. We'll take a look from above and you can see the top of the beach here is the new part that was made when the water was high. When the water began to drop, much of the original beach was exposed, but some of it still flooded. That's why it's such a sandy bottom as you work your way out into the lake. That's some of the original beach still underwater. Let's give you a quick look around Blue Lake so you can understand what you'll find when you get here. Up in the top left hand corner is the group camping area of the provincial campground. You can book that with your group for a big party. In the foreground, we're looking at a private campground. These are seasonal spots of people that are renting long term. It's just across the road from the resort. 
Here's a look at the public campground. This is what you'll be booking on the Manitoba Parks website. Now, if you're used to campgrounds in southern Manitoba where you might not see a tree for miles, you'll find these sites extremely private. They're nestled in the woods, so as you camp, you may not even know you have a lot of neighbors. No matter where you are in this campground, you're only steps away from the main beach and the lake. You can drive there if you like, but of course, you can do what these folks are doing and simply walk from your campsite past the resort and end up on the beach. You'll see lots of people making that trip both from the public campground as well as across the road at the private campground and those group camping sites. The Blue Lakes Resort does have fuel and some days they're offering hot food. Check with the resort for what's available and when. You can always give them a call at the number on their website or simply check the window as you walk by. The french fries here are delicious. The chicken's pretty good too and there's fried pierogies and fried pickles. Who can go wrong with food choices like that? If you're coming to Blue Lakes from afar, you'll need a Manitoba Parks Pass. Those are available online and you can print them at home. A two-vehicle pass for the entire year is around $45. There's also options to buy passes for just a couple days. You'll find that all on the internet. No matter what you're coming for, there's a lot of things to see. Blue Lakes is just part of a larger area of the Duck Mountain Provincial Park. We mentioned Baldy Mountain before, it's just down this road, plus there's other lakes around. Child's Lake has another resort and is popular, and down the road the other way, you'll find Wellman Lake. That resort is also fairly popular. Blue Lakes has only a couple private cabins, but those other lakes have a lot. So if you're looking to move permanently to the Duck Mountains, you may find your home near the water. But if you're coming for a day or a week, Blue Lakes is certainly the place you want to check out. You'll find Blue Lakes about an hour from Swan River or from Dauphin. Now, if you're here and needing to go shopping, Dauphin has a Walmart. It's the closest one, plus your McDonald's fix is waiting in that city. There certainly is an opportunity though to come to Blue Lakes and simply stay here and find everything you need at the resort and of course with these beautiful surroundings. Well that's it for this edition of Travels with Bill. We hope you've enjoyed visiting Manitoba's Blue Lakes in the Duck Mountain Provincial Park. We can't wait to see you come out and take a peek at the location as well. If you've enjoyed Travels with Bill, why not subscribe to the channel? Not only are we traveling across the province and the country showing you various things, some Travels with Bill look back in history or look at some of the more interesting things you'll find. There's always something to see when you subscribe to the Travels with Bill channel. Goodbye for now from the Blue Lakes, and we'll see you again soon.